Hey everybody, it's Paul from Inside PA Training. I just got home from clinic. I'm still in my scrubs. I got my stethoscope here. I thought I would do a quick video on the parts of the stethoscope. And uh, if you've done any reading or you've worked in medicine, I'm sure you probably know the parts. But I haven't seen any, uh, not that much information out there on how they actually work. And understanding how a stethoscope works properly will help you get more out of it. So I want to do a quick video showing you the parts and then I'll do another one that will be a sequel to this and it will be actually how the parts work together. So I have here my Littman Cardiology 3 uh, stethoscope, L for Littman. You see that a lot in medicine. It's a very popular stethoscope. It's uh, not too expensive but it's good quality, well made. Um, I think I paid 80 or 100 bucks for this one. Um, you can definitely spend more. You can spend three, four hundred dollars on a digital one if you want, although I don't think anybody who's not in cardiology needs a digital stethoscope and maybe even those folks in cardiology don't. Um, and you can certainly spend less money on a stethoscope. You can get a $12 one I saw the other day, which I wouldn't recommend, but if that's all you can afford, you know, that's cool. So really quickly, the parts. Here are the ear tips. Doesn't require much explanation, although I will come back to it. There's a, a subtle point. Well, I'll just do that now. There isn't a diaphragm here. This is just a hole that goes straight into this tube, okay? And that will figure into how it works when we talk about that. So ear tips, these are the binaurals. Bi for two. Gnarl has to do with aural, ear. Um, and a, a little tip for you. If you turn them sideways, you can see they point kind of that way or that way. Uh, the way you wear a stethoscope is you put them in your ears so those tips point slightly toward your nose. You can see it faces a little bit forward and that's because my external auditory meatus, which just means my ear, the canal actually points a little bit anterior toward my nose. So you get better sound transmission, it's more comfortable. So after the binaurals we come to this flexible tubing. Um, uh, all kinds of plastic they make these from. Uh, the better ones have a much more durable plastic that will last a lot longer. Um, don't ever clean these with any solvents. I think one time I made the mistake of cleaning some paint that got on mine with uh, nail polish remover and it kind of degraded the plastic so just be careful of that. In a good stethoscope you'll see one tube that if you could look inside is actually two tubes stuck together it's got a divider down the middle, so there, we say there are two channels. Um, and it splits into two gradually right here. Cheaper stethoscopes will have a single tube that comes up and it hits this U-shape here at a 90 degree angle. And what that does is it dissipates some of the sound. You don't get as good sound transmission. So that's that can kind of give you a sense for, for you using a good one or a cheap one. So this two channels right here individually separates the uh, sound transmission that comes from the other end as it goes into the ears. We'll go to that. This is the business end. This is called the chest piece, and uh, it's called the chest piece because more than often, more often than not, you're using it on your patient's chest. It has what we call a stem. The stem, um, the tubing is fed onto the stem. If you ever have to replace it, you soak the tubing in warm water, and it makes it softer and it stretches a little, and you can get it over the end of this. And then inside this is a ball bearing with a hole in it and it only faces one direction or the other so that you can only ever listen to one side or the other at a time and if you're listening to the wrong side you need to switch it you rotate it and you hear that little click that's the ball bearing and uh, you see doctors and nurses and PAs all the time tapping their stethoscope they want to know which side is it on right now my diaphragm's loud the small diaphragm is quiet so if I wanted to use the small diaphragm just flip it 180 now I can hear it just fine um, so those are the parts of the stethoscope. Uh, oh, and there's one other part that I don't have. I don't have a stethoscope with a bell, which I want to tell you about. This is the diaphragm. Some people mistakenly call this smaller one the, di uh, the bell. It is not a bell. This is a smaller diaphragm. That's really the only name for it. And uh, we use this primarily for pediatric patients, children, because it's smaller. Their, their organs are closer together because their bodies are smaller. And you get a little more specific listening power where you're listening uh, because you have a smaller, more focused area where you're picking up sound transmission. If you have a stethoscope with a bell right on, I kind of wish I did, uh, the Littman Cardiology 3 just doesn't come with one, but a bell looks like, um, it basically looks like this small diaphragm here but without the uh, 
um, membrane over the top. And so if you were to look inside, it looks uh, concave like the inside of a suction cup, a metal suction cup. That's, that's a true bell. It looks like the inside of a bell. And the bell is used for listening to the lowest sounds. And the way you use the bell is you place it over the heart or wherever you're listening, but gently. That's the key. If you press hard, it begins to act like a diaphragm. So I'll explain how they work in the next video. Hopefully that'll give you this will give you a pretty good feel for the parts. Uh, if you want to learn how they work together and a little bit about why you use one versus the other, then check out the next video. Okay. Again, inside PA training, I hope you come by and take a look. Thanks a lot.